your Xamarin application targets iOS, Android or both, configuring the MCS SDK is exactly the same. In today's Oracle Mobile Cloud Service episode, you will learn how to configure the Xamarin MCS SDK inside the Xamarin Studio IDE. I'm your host, Frédéric Debien, from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. The whole point of using MCS as the backend for your mobile applications is to simplify development. So, it will not surprise you if I say the various MCS SDKs have the same objective. Yes, most MCS APIs are available via remote REST calls you can write by hand in C-sharp. However, the SDK provides native libraries and functions to greatly reduce the amount of code you will need to write in order to interact with MCS. I'll assume you've already created a mobile backend in MCS and configured a Realm and mobile user for this episode. If you are not sure how to do this, no worries. This is a simple process and there are videos explaining how to do it on this channel. Configuring the SDK is a five-step process. First, create the app. Second, register the app if it will receive notifications. Third, install the SDK. Fourth, configure the SDK. And finally, five, call the authentication API. The first step is to create the app. Let's start Xamarin Studio and do this. For the purposes of this demo, I will select a cross-platform Xamarin Forms application, but we'll build it for iOS only. The SDK works with Xamarin Android and Xamarin iOS as well. I then specify the name I want for the application. If the application will be deployed on iOS, do not forget to pick an organization identifier that matches the profile and certificate that will be used to sign the app. In this case, I select iOS as the target platform. I make sure the used shared library option is selected for shared code. I then select names for the project and solution and specify the folder where I want to create the project. Xamarin Studio creates the basic structure of the project. Before I continue modifying the app, I need to register it against the mobile backend in MCS if it is supposed to receive push notifications. You do this by accessing the MCS mobile backend in the MCS UI. I will now show you the process. In this case, I will do it for iOS, but you will have to do it for Android as well if you deploy your application on both OSs. I select the register another application link and in the resulting dialog select iOS. From here, I type the application name. I'll use my MCS demo as well as the full identifier for the application. Once done, you will see the new application registered against the MBE, as well as an application key generated by MCS. Above that, you will see the base URL, mobile backend ID, and anonymous key. You will need all of these a little later on, so don't close your browser window. Up to now, I created a new Xamarin app and registered it on MCS. The next step is to add the MCS SDK to it. This is very easy since the SDK has been packaged as a Xamarin component. To add the component to my project, I now open the iOS node for my application in the Component Explorer and then do a control click on the Components node. In the menu, I select the Get More Components option. I just have to type MCS in the search box on the left to get the component I need. Then, I click on it and click again on the Add to App button contained in the Components information page. After a few seconds, I am brought back to Xamarin Studio. Useful information about the SDK is displayed and, as you see, the component has been installed successfully. If you prefer to do so, it is also possible to download the SDK from the website of the Xamarin Component Store and add it manually to your app. My app is now ready to use the SDK. The next step is to configure the SDK to connect to the MCS backend. This is done through a configuration file. The name of the file must be mcsconfiguration.json and the file must be placed at the root of the project. Also, I must change the files action to 
and bed resource. A single Xamarin application can connect to several different MCS mobile backends. The MCS configuration.json file can contain settings for each of those. Let's have a look at a sample file. Each backend is identified by a name, which does not to have to match the one used by MCS. When you will write your code, you will be able to retrieve an instance of the backend using that name. It is also possible to flag one of the backends as the default one. All the other values can be copied and pasted from the MCS UI. The base URI for the backend can be shared by multiple apps, but the application key is specific to an application and operating system. This is not a problem even if your app is meant to run on both iOS and Android, since each platform-specific project in the solution requires its own copy of the MCS configuration.json file. Finally, the authorization node is used to specify the security parameters for the backend. In this example, I am using HTTP basic authentication, although OAuth 2.0 is supported as well. With this, SDK configuration is complete. I am now ready to build the app. At this point, I could simply stop here. The other episodes in this series will show you how to use the various features of the SDK after all. However, to use those features, all the apps you will build will need to authenticate against MCS. This is true even if your app supports anonymous usage, which means that you do not ask users to supply their credentials. Given this, I will show you how to implement authentication. The SDK is structured in a way where you need an instance of a mobile backend object to do anything. This means I must first ensure that the SDK is initialized at application startup and that my business logic can retrieve a mobile backend. I need to add a few using directives for things to work. And then I define a simple static getter which will always return the default mobile backend. To initialize the SDK, I have to read the configuration file. This cannot be performed in the shared library. Since I have chosen to create an iOS application, I will need to add code to the app delegate class in order to read the configuration file from inside the app's assembly. The sample apps included with the SDK include a helper class to do just that. I extracted it earlier and I just have to copy it in my project to use it. Once again, I must add relevant using directives for the helper class, for the MCS SDK, and to the .NET Reflection API. The code required to initialize the SDK is simple. First, I acquire a stream on the MCS configuration.json file. This is what the helper class is for. I use the Reflection API to specify in which assembly to search for the file. Second, I create a mobile backend configuration object and assign it as the configuration for the mobile backend manager. With that, the SDK will be usable anywhere in the application. I told you earlier I would show you how to authenticate users. To do that, I need to add a login page to my application. Now, let's add a few XAML controls. I will define two text fields for the username and password and a button to start the login process. I give names to the entry components since I will reference them later in my code. I need something to happen when the user clicks on the login button. Consequently, I will add an event handler to the code behind class for the page. I also need to wire this event handler to the button in my XAML page. At this point, I am ready to implement authorization. This is accomplished through the following code. First thing, once again, I must specify a few usings. Been there, done that. Good. Now, I can implement the code. To authenticate, I need an authorization object. I can create one by calling the authorization method on a backend instance. In this case, we already have added a getter to the app class. This getter returns the default backend defined in MCS configuration.json. Authorization will perform the actual authentication for me through the authenticate async method. 
This method has two parameters, one is the username and the other one is the password. I use the text property of the two entry controls in my XAML page to provide the values. Since this is an asynchronous call, I prefix it with the await operator. Authenticate async will return true if the authentication has been successful, as you may expect. The application will display an appropriate message depending on the outcome of the authentication process. There are two small things I need to take care of. On iOS 8 and higher, it is necessary to add an entry to the application's info.plist file for things to work, since the framework uses core location behind the scenes. In this case, I add NS location always usage description. Also, I must make my login page the default page for the app. To do this, I must replace some of the code in the cross-platform application class. And that's it. Let's now see how this looks at runtime. As you can see, my login screen is not much to look at, but it protests as expected when I try to connect using invalid credentials. Things are different when I use a real username with the correct password. Success! And that completes how to authenticate your mobile users from the MCS SDK. From here, you would then start calling various MCS SDK platform APIs, but I'm not going to do that here. Otherwise, who would watch the other episodes in this series? As you have seen, setting up the MCS client SDK in a Xamarin application is straightforward. Don't forget that you can access short code samples directly in Xamarin Studio if you need to know how to get started with a particular feature. That's all for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time.